Okay, it's uh, seven o'clock. Uh, call to order the regular uh, monthly meeting huh? of the Wilton Town Board. Okay, we're going to start back um, from 12 going. We'll begin, begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Roll call, please. Supervisor Johnson. Here. Councilman Stryker. Here. Councilman Bogardis. Present. Deputy Supervisor Lamp. Here. Councilman McEachern. Here. Okay, at the beginning of the meeting, we have a public uh, comment period. <coughs> we have several people have signed up. I just want to remind everyone to, when, to come up here, give your name, address, and there is a three minute uh, limitation on uh, the time to speak. Uh, first person is uh, Shelley Gale. Hello. I'm, I'm known as Shelley Gale, and I reside at 24 Compton Court. My husband and I were told by Mark Mindkin that a trail will be built here in Fort Farm and go right to our lot. We proceeded to gather information. Afterwards, the Fort Farm residential community learned of the planned construction of a public walking trail in our subdivision through our ma a mass email. On May 31st, the developer Bill Morris and the builder Magic Cat held an informational meeting about the construction of the walking trail. They also unveiled um, the parking area signage for the trail at the end of Four Lane. The property owners of Four Farm have invested together more than $15 million in their homes. The information given at this meeting should have been provided to prospective purchasers before each of us went to contract. There are many issues attached to a public trail and trailhead in a residential neighborhood. The impact varies with individual lots. Six lots actually have the trail on their property. So, um, several lots are in close proximity to the public parking area. Briefly, here are some issues with the trail considering the future impact when the trail becomes linked to others. Ours is too burdensome and complex to be part of this statement. Mr. Mars stated on May 31st meeting that the town has no plan nor resources to maintain the trail. The responsibility for the trail lies with the town. The town should have in place a loop insurance policy dealing with liability concerning public uses of the trail. Property owners who have the trail on or adjacent to their property need copies of this policy for their insurance companies and themselves. We need to notify our insurance companies as New York recommends about $5 million in liability coverage in such cases. If the presence of the trail is not disclosed, trail incidents will not be covered. People go off trail, kids party, dogs go off leash and off trail. The EPA identifies dog waste as an environmental pollutant in the same category as oil, grease, and toxic chemicals, among others. We've provided the town with a handout about various common bacterial, viral, and protozoal diseases carried in dog feces. Runoff from rain and snow carries these microscopic organisms into the stormwater management area in front of our homes and the wetlands behind. The town should protect our water supply. Types of risks include personal injury, vandalism, trespassing on trail, biohazards from dog feces and urine, safety, loss of privacy, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. In many cases, there is financial loss of property values. Considering the burden placed on its newest residents who no fault of their own, and the burden to the town, we ask that the town revisit the wisdom of this plan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right to the second. Uh, excuse me for the, if I screw up the name. Rocco, um, <laughs> Come on up, Rocco. Okay. My name is Rocco Wardy. I live at 24 Conklin Court. I am a Vietnam combat veteran and a senior citizen. I have never been in front of a town board before. 
The residents of Poor Farm were never told of the construction of a walking trail and parking lot. We only found out a short time ago what was going to happen in our subdivision. We searched the Saratoga County clerk's documents and received oil documents from the town. After this, in speaking to the builder and Mr. Morris, we felt compelled to reach out to our neighbors to see what they were told about the trail. No one, either in person or email, knew about any construction of the trail or parking lot within, with the trail. It seems that we were all told the same story that it is a trail exists and that it's an old abandoned trail. This is very different than creating a trail, maintaining it, and cre creating a trailhead with parking. This will drive traffic here. We would have never purchased this property if we knew that a walking trail was to be constructed here. We came here for peace and quiet and privacy. We never saw the lot as it was supposed to be. We only learned weeks ago that there was a 30-foot, no-cut area, about 3,000 square feet of woodlands that was cleared. This included 15 feet of the wetlands buffer. This was the no-cut area described in the easement deed that we found recently at the county clerk's office. If more disturbance should occur on our lot, which has significant runoff issues, the impact would be great. We've had a great wrong done to us as individuals and as a group. The town of Wilton should rethink their plans and resolve this matter. Thank you. Uh, Eric Rosenberg. Good evening, Eric Rosenberg, 60 Crawl Lane. Um, I have a few things this evening. Um, first of all, um, for those of you who don't know, I uh, sit on the board of directors of Wilton Food Pantry, and I wanted to thank uh, Wilton and its residents. We had a very successful <coughs> empty bowl event. Um, uh, back in April, and of course the proceeds from that go um, to help uh, those of us in Wilton who are less fortunate and put food on their table. Um, another thing I, I just wanted to mention about Wilton, um, one of the more frustrating things about living in this part of Wilton is we can't get Chinese food delivery out here, and I was just wondering if any of you guys can work on that. It's a real problem. Um, anyway, I've, you are right. and I've talked to people about it. it, it I'm not the only one who's worried about that. <laughs> Um, uh, and now on to a more serious note, um, you know, besides being town board members, part of your role is really to be stewards for, for uh, Wilton and for the future residents of Wilton. And, you know, I see all the time that, with all due respect to the board, um, I don't think you're really taking your role as stewards for this community um, as you should. Uh, being proper stewards does not include continuing to do things the same way they've been done for the last 30 years. Um, towns grow, businesses grow, and things need to change in order to keep up with the times. Proper steward stewardship does not include turning the planning function of Wilton over to the developers. Okay, and for some reason, um, this board refuses, and the Hamlet's one place in particular, you refuse to hire experts like just about every other community in the world would, um, to make sure that the future of Wilton is done properly. Um, uh, you know, putting the developers in charge is like putting the fox in charge of the hen house. Um, those are not the people that should be planning the future of Wilton. And to turn it over to the developers like it seems is going to happen, at least it appears so, is a derogation of your duties. Proper stewardship doesn't allow an auto repair shop in a residential neighborhood to continue for more than five years. Proper stewardship doesn't allow the mess on 421 Northern Pines to continue for more than 15 years. There are properties all over Wilton in violation of our zoning code. Um, I think uh, uh, people have brought to the attention of the board um, trailers and, and, and boats sitting in front of the houses in, in violation of the code. Um, uh, uh, storage sheds not being paid for in terms of needing a building permit. Very selective enforcement. Um, Route 9, um, we have the new project coming in. People are complaining about the density. Uh, we had a problem with the Gordon building a few years ago, and apparently this board did not get the message. Um, we're approving and moving forward with an auto repair shop that's going to be partially um, an auto wrecking yard. So um, it's time to start moving to the future and stop being stuck in the past. 
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Nancy Dwyer. Uh, Nancy Dwyer, 12 New Kent Road, uh, Rotem. Uh, very recently, an interesting phenomenon happened to two of our town board members. The first, like most of us, had no idea there was or is a committee that needs to address zoning code revisions and that it has been in existence for three years trying to bring our code in line with the 2015 comprehensive plan updates. The second, like us, got to experience the frustration of being in the cannot speak group and limited an opportunity to be an active, concerned participant in this town. I hope the experiences were eye-opening and the irony not lost. Both were in um, conjunction with our moratorium and our code revision committee meetings. Uh, why would we not institute a moratorium? Its purpose states it is necessary to allow the town board time to evaluate issues pertaining to the development of our hamlet. One of those issues is the code, a most critical building block in the process that sets the ground rules and regulations that determine what our hamlet ultimately looks like, feels like, behaves like, not only for today, but for years to come. Why would we not institute a moratorium to develop the critical building block? Build out and up of this hamlet has begun, and we are witnessing firsthand how our current code is not supporting our initial vision. Now is a critical time as the desirability of this land area is peaking and more and more development will be requested. The moratorium protects us. Who else would we want to protect? Can you explain how a moratorium would hurt us? If not, why would we not institute a moratorium to protect us? Moratorium has a time period and can be terminated earlier if the board sees fit. I know the committee seems to be close to having things buttoned up, but that is just one step in the process. Each required successive step is held hostage to once a month meetings by the county and the town. I also know that at the last two meetings, requests were made to hire professional planning services that would allow the code revision committee time to seek outside professional help for insight and input into things like architectural details, language for code, tables of use, standard practices, and scale for a town the size of ours. Most of the members in this committee are volunteers with minimal expertise, if any. You're asking and have been asking a small, very particular group of volunteers to redefine or clarify the Hamlet vision and code meant to guide and develop that vision. Why are town residents, and particularly the renters in the current buildings and nearby, not being invited to the table to share their needs, wants, and desires? We need this moratorium and we need more community and professional involvement and discussion. Art, given you indicated a pri at a prior town board meeting that one of the reasons we don't need a planner is because we can hire those services on an as-need basis. Why are we not investing in our hamlet with input from professionals who are trained in these matters? Come to us without bias and can help us create good code to build the hamlet and vision for our town. Time and again I hear, let the market determine the development. Well, how about we start letting our vision determine the development? We need this moratorium because we need professional, independent input. We need opportunity for community involvement and input during the process. We need to not rush through, at the 11th hour, a critical component in the growth of our town. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is uh, Connie Towers. with you know the market whatever is available so again here's where well, there were good things um what and there was a lot of planning over the years the, the committees and everything but the last meeting they thought it was the scale and not the density that really drove the project and i disagree because the density drives the parking the green space the public space and it cramps it 
And again, I'll bring this up because it is so much a part of the Hamlet, is Park Place. And we determined after the gross billable income, uh, uh, gross billable uh, acreage, it was 12.8. 12.8 doesn't work. 12.8 doesn't work. It crams too much product <coughs> into the site. So I'm asking you to take a step back to figure out what's the purpose of what we're doing here in the town. Um, and again, maybe we're going to say, some developers are going to say, well, then we'll, we'll, we'll take the parking down. That's not what the town code says. So what will happen is there will be an attorney that will come in to these developments and they will say, well, let's do this or let's, let's drive the parking down because we don't need this, we don't need this space. And so I, I will say this, in 2014, <coughs> Brown's attorney tried to take down the parking spaces that he needed for the amount of buildings that he was trying to do in the old Everglades. Um, and what he tried to do was take his PUD land that's adjacent and use that parking space for the buildings that he wanted to do for the project. Now, we need to fit the project to the land and not vice versa. So what do you envision? I think we can do this and we can make the architects fit and be creative to fit the <coughs> land and not the other way around. Um, the other thing I've I've gotten a lot of feedback about DOT and how we do things, but all right, all I'm gonna say is that 15A was in the comprehensive plan for a long time, and it <coughs> suggests that whole Northern Pines project, that whole Northern Pines area. So if we don't have DOT coming in in 10 years, think about what that's gonna look like at CBS and that whole crux of the whole Northern Pines. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, uh, Chris Ramsdale. Chris Ramsdale, 4280 Route 50. I just uh, also want to speak about the Zoning Revision Committee, kind of give an update of where we're at and speak to the moratorium. Uh, the Zoning Revision Committee has had at least somewhere between 13 and 15 hours of meetings just on the Hamlet zone at this point. I believe we have a very detailed, good plan that we're submitting to the town. Uh, should be probably one more meeting just to clean up some language and we'll be able to have that submitted. As a result, I don't feel the moratorium is required. I think moratoriums initially were designed to prevent people and developers from rushing in to try to beat a change in zoning. I believe at this point we're so close to having a finished product for the town to review that I think it's very unlikely that we would have a rush of people coming in to try to beat a change in zoning, which was the initial intent of moratoriums established in the state. So I think that it, it, it's an unnecessary step. I think it can have bad consequences because it creates uncertainty for people. I think people are looking to come in and invest in the community. The fear of a moratorium can be a disincentive for those people to feel that this is a safe community to come into. Because they could begin an investment, uh, start to work on a project, and then have everything come to a halt. And it can have disastrous consequences for business. So I think just the presence of a moratorium being something that's used in our community enhances for people a lot of uncertainty. And it can have a negative consequence for the community. Um, I also think that the Hamlet zone code was written and proposed and initiated by a professional planner and it's something a lot of people have been greatly dissatisfied with so I'm not saying that you know the people on our committee are superior in any way to professional people but I think that we have a, a good idea of what the values are of the community because we're residents and we've been looking to try and strengthen that zone to make it a better community, a uh, better fit for the town of Wilton. And planners can make mistakes. I think in this case, a lot of the er errors that people are unhappy with um, aren't necessarily something that a planner would fix. I think residents of the community often can have a better perspective on how to resolve those issues. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Joanne Clevertor. <coughs> One Parker's group. For my public comment tonight, I'd like to piggyback on what Eric Rosenberg has been trying to drill home for more than a year now. 
This town has a problem with enforcing our town code with regard to zoning. I foiled information on 669 Maple Avenue owned by Mr. Richard Woodcock in order to review the site plan for that parcel listed. On the assessment roll is single family residential. There are currently 33 sheds on the property and no site plan in the file folder. What I did find were letters from our code enforcer written to the owner dated over five years ago stating that he was not in compliance with the code. One letter even gave a deadline for compliance and stated further that if not met, the owner would be required to appear in town court. Nothing has ever been done in this instance as far as I could determine looking at the file. There is no follow-up. I can't understand what the problem is here. Why is nothing ever done or followed up on? Why aren't habitual violators not made to conform? Doesn't the town employ both the code enforcer and the town judges? Don't we Wilton residents pay them? Can a fee schedule be implemented to force business owners to conform and pay up? I don't understand where the problem is. As Eric has pointed out, we are not a small town any longer. A pat on the back with a warning should no longer be acceptable practice. Now having Mr. Casio as acting judge and a true professional, perhaps we can finally turn the corner and get these issues taken care of once and for all. Another case in point is a car dealership at 617 Route 9 Maple Avenue where they continuously insist on parking their large pickup trucks in the designated open space. When they're worn, they move them for several weeks and move them back again. How many times have they been worn? Aren't others bothered by people not complying with our code? Am I the only resident who sees that there is money to be made by the town if a fee schedule is implemented? This is a blatant lack of respect for the town code and our elected councilman should be doing something about this now. Instead of charging 30 or $35 for erecting a little Home Depot shed in someone's backyard, um, they should be concentrating our, on larger <laughs> offenders. I know from past experience that nothing will be done in response to this comment to either of these offenders or others, but at least it will be on record once again. Lastly, as part of the code revision committee, I feel that there are still things that the committee members are not in total agreement on and more work needs to be done regarding the future of Route 9, but specifically on the Hamlet 1 zone, such an important high visibility area of Wilton. Besides density, uses, height of building, setbacks, and architecture, the other area which needs to be addressed and sent to the DOT is a problem with the intersection of Northern Pines and Route 9. Now, because of the traffic volume, people heading in a northerly direction have begun taking the right-hand turning lane for Northern Pines, even if they are going straight, because people turning left onto CBS hold up traffic through light changes. A major accident waiting to happen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, David Bushin. David Buchan, uh, 201 Heritage Way. I want to talk about the recent school board election. First, at recent school board meetings, at recent board meetings here, there have been questions raised about where the city of Wilton stood on the issues of school safety. As it turned out, in the election, Wilton residents voted two to one in favor of candidates who supported the army of the ballot population. This overwhelming show of support from the people of Wilton validates the vote the board took back in January in support of the army and the monitors. All five board members clearly had an accurate read on what the majority of the world residents wanted, which is why they had that elected and why they shall be commended for their support of the groups that school safety. Two, a Wilton resident and zoning board of appeals member Dean Colligan was elected to the school board, so that's a good thing for the board. And third, Wilton's own Kara Rossetti, who's the head of the Saratoga um, SPSS, she needs to be commended for the effort she put in on the school board election. Kara is neither a political person nor a gun person. She just apparently that was concerned when she heard that school safety was being compromised. She didn't just sit around and complain. She got involved and mobilized what was arguably the most competitive school board election in Saratoga Springs history and at least this year, the most competitive school board election in the state. Uh, the school board election was covered by all four t local TV stations, and there were numerous articles, front page articles, in, in the Times, Journal, Gazette, and all the local papers. Turnout was 
double normal. Many school board elections can't even find enough people to fill up the slot. This one has seven candidates vying for three openings. Increased awareness and participation in elections is always a good thing, and Kara deserves the credit for much of that. She is a good leader. Thank you. Thanks, Betty. Okay, that's all the public comment. I want to thank all those for their input tonight. We certainly will take into consideration all the comments that people have uh, talked about tonight. Uh, item four on the agenda is the minutes pending from our May meeting. Is our motion to approve? Well, quick, quick correction. Yeah. Proposed on page 6576 is a reference to attorney Paul Golden. His name is Paul Goldman. Thank you. G-O-L-D-M-A-N. Thank you. Good. Was that a plug? Is the motion to approve the minutes? Not, with change. Absolutely not. Does that change? With, with that change. Yeah. Make a motion to approve the pending minutes with them changes. I'll second that. Okay, you have a motion and a second. Any other? Time's up. Time's up. <laughs> <laughs> Shut me off. <laughs> um, um, any other questions or amendments to the minutes? No? Uh, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Uh, uh, park and rec fees. Uh, I can turn this over to um, Councilman Stryker, but um, you have before you tonight some recommended uh, fee changes, not significant uh, in regards to some of the uh, activities. At, at Gavin, at Gavin Park, see right. you talk well, about that. Um, there are there are some changes, uh, uh, additional fees to after school program, ten dollars over a two month period. Um, summer camp being raised, uh, additional fees for the um, field trips for. Uh, Come great expenses to the town. Uh, the uh, fees are very competitive. We're actually one of the, the most uh, inexpensive camp in all of Saratoga County, um, and it's a very good value. Uh, we get a lot of uh, compliments on the, the fees of our our camps, so I think they're appropriate. Um, one of the things uh, we have a new pavilion rental fees. Right now, we're setting them at these rates. Uh, they might need to be adjusted for the future. I think they're a little low, personally, but we're going to see how it goes. And uh, and per day? No, yeah, it's a per day rental. The large pavilion is 120 by. It's a huge. Uh, it's not a rent in what is old category. Those are Wilton residents here. Category two is Wilton residents. Uh, category one basically is like um, government. You know, uh, category two would be Wilton residents. Category three is Saratoga School District, and category four would be outside the, the district. Thank you. So these were reviewed by the Park and yeah, Rec Park and Commission, Commission uh, approved all these uh, changes. The Park staff approved these changes. So. Um, get all, all on board. So, yeah. is there any questions about anything? The, no, not yeah. lately. Everything's been going good. Yeah. We're gonna. I think we're gonna adult basketball. I uh, I talked to uh, Mark Marino and Ross um, and McNeil, and we're gonna probably like to keep uh, the adult basketball five dollars across the board. Gonna keep uh, the double. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> where is Ross? He's yeah. here. Well, it seems like the very modest increase is given the um, the expense of operations at the park. Yes. Plus, keep going up, so we do need to keep our fee schedule um, in line with it with costs. Right, so. Yeah. So the only change that I would recommend would be uh, keep basketball five dollars across adult basketball five dollars. Uh, Across the board for all categories. It's uh, you know walk in, just show up on Monday nights at eight o'clock and play for two hours. 
I actually played in that a few weeks ago, or misfortune playing that a few weeks ago. And uh, a great program, and it's well populated, and uh, it's well run. Okay. Okay. Any questions to Steve or the fee schedule? If not, is there a motion to, to approve the fee schedule? Um, with the with the changes to adult basketball? Yes. A motion okay. by no, no, I'll, I'll, I'll make the motion to approve the changes except for the um, keep adult basketball at five dollars. So we're going to accept categories. the proposal by the park as opposed to the proposal by the commission. Well, th that's the commission except for that one change. This one change, so just that one change. Okay, because they're looking at the two proposals. Yeah, that's the only that's the only difference. Right. So Everything else has been approved by them. Right. Right. After talking with uh, the so park staff, they like to keep it at that rate for the basketball. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. And we have a motion made by I'll second. Second, yeah. second by Councilman McCacken. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No move. Uh, independent auditors report. This is Maria. Yes. So we received our clean audit opinion uh, for our financial statements, which the board has already received electronically. Um, we have a great working relationship with CUSAC and company, our CPAs. Um, if anybody has any questions on the financial statements. I'll be happy to answer questions either now or by email if it comes up later. It's basically a clean report. Clean We're doing report, yes. Any questions okay. of Maria? Great job for Maria. Thank you. Yeah. Well, it was Jeff in the first eight months of the year, <laughs> nine months. I know, but it's hard to step in here and, and um, you know, Thank you. take over this whole accounting system. Thank and, you. And yeah. Be so accurate. <laughs> Thank you very much. I have good help, too. <laughs> So, so we need a uh, motion to accept uh, the, the auditor's report. I'll make the motion that we accept the independent auditor's report. Yeah. So I'll second, second it. Okay, a motion and second. Any questions or discussion? <coughs> okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. And next we welcome our executive director of the Wilton Wildlife Reserve and Park to uh, give her quarterly uh, report. I know it's always good stuff. Welcome, <coughs> Margo. Thank you. Um, the information is in the, in the back of the room. People got a chance to see it. Um, it's the second quarter. Uh, we're very busy this year. And uh, the first quarter report is about one side of the page, and the second quarter report is about both sides of the page. So I don't know if that, I guess we've been very busy. Um, certainly, it's a busy time with school groups. We're very busy with field trips, uh, which is really great. We love to see uh, people coming to the park. We love to see them using the facilities there, getting out on the trails, um, enjoying the pond. Uh, it, we see lots of kids there fishing after the fish stocking, which I realize I left off in the recreation report, because the people are, are fishing there. So it's really great to see people out and enjoying this wonderful facility um, that the town has invested in. Um, just this past weekend, we had our annual wildlife festival, and even though Sunday was kind of a threatening day and it kind of rained a little in the middle of the day, we had over 400 people who wow. came and participated in the different events and programs that were going on. That was from 11 to 3, so we're really pleased with that. We have other events that will be going on, and there's a flyer in the back that has some of those uh, events listed. And this Sunday, which is supposed to be a beautiful day, we got a grant from the San Francisco County Arts Council, so we're bringing in a bluegrass fan, so bluegrass for the Carter Blues. So that'll be under the pavilion at the parade ground in Camp Sarasota. We'll have a little barbecue, and then there'll be some Carter Butterfly Walk, a walk before the concert and the photography walk after the concert for people who might want to tag on another activity while they're doing that. And the fire tower will also be open this weekend. Um, and uh, I think, you know, the report kind of speaks for itself. We have so much going on, and we're really appreciative of the community support that we get from all of our members and all the people who use the park and certainly from the town um, for maintaining the facility and really, um, really helping to make it such a successful project. Uh, one thing that I wanted to say um, to anyone, whether you come for an official program or not, you need to go out there in the next week because all this rain 
they need something to keep people happy. But the lupin plants are very happy. <coughs> and the beautiful purple flowers that are there. So whether you go from Camp Saratoga and park in parking lot number one and just take a you know a three minute walk up into the meadow and see those flowers or pull into the parking areas on Route 50 there. Um, just uh, south of Valley Road. There's two trailheads, and with very little effort, you can get out into those fields and see those gorgeous flowers. And of course, the butterflies are wonderful to see as well. Um, but the butterflies will be, again, the second fruit is in July, but the lupin will be done in another week or two. And so it really is something to see. And so I really do encourage you all to take advantage I saw somebody posted on Facebook that um, they went for a run out at one of the parcels and they said they thought that they were going for a run um, in the land of Oz because of these <laughs> fields of purple flowers that are really so lovely. So, um, <coughs> so I think that kind of covers it. Um, unless, are there any questions? Is anyone? Question to the board yeah. first and then I'll leave. So oh, sorry. So, um, so, oh, we didn't um, put the July and August dates. My apologies. It's the second weekend of the month. So we'll be open the second weekend of July and the second weekend of August also. So that, uh, the fire tower is kind of a separate group of volunteers that runs the fire tower. And so um, they kind of take, they take the, the lead in that. Um, we have some overlapping volunteers there. Um, and so if, if you are interested in visiting the fire tower times when it's not open, um, you can get in touch with us at the park and then we can put you in touch with people. Because sometimes people set up special visits if they can't make it um, on the weekends when it's open. But it's really, it's volunteer dependent. So, we'll have to change the flyers with those July and August dates in. Any questions from the board? Well, well presented. Michael, right, thank you. Thank you for the great job. Thank you. Thank you. Really, you know, we couldn't do it without all of your support. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next up is um, the moratorium. We had a uh, public hearing on that back in uh, back in May and. Uh, um, uh, at, at, in, we didn't vote on, on it on the moratorium. We turned it over to the zoning revision committee to do some some work on it between now and, and this meeting. And I think John John has some comments to make about it. Yeah, I'd like to thank everybody who sat on that uh, uh, that um, that uh, committee and the residents who came. Uh, I, see, I can see a lot of changes are trying to be made and the board members have their own ideas and I believe we have the final say and I just received this uh, 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 today my brain ain't big enough to digest all this so I'd like to have some time to look at that and like I say some board members have their own ideas and uh, I like to stop the uh, Put a stop to the um, the mo the, motor the motorium, and I think next month everybody would be happy with the changes. And uh, if that don't work, we'll look at it again six and six and six is seven months and go at it again. But it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Yeah, I sat in on a lot of the uh, meetings. There, the one major issue I have is with the density. Um, the committee was not willing to budge on the density requirements, um, but I think the board, like like Councilman uh, or yeah, Deputy Supervisor Josh. Lant had said, um, the board has the ultimate decision, and if I have anything to do with it, that density will be dropped. But uh, uh, until somebody else wants to run for this position and bring it back up to 15, that's entirely up to them. But I'm not happy with not changing the one thing that I really wanted to change. And uh, I believe we will drop that down to where it belongs, in our eyes anyways. And that's based on 
the input from the residents of the town of Wilton. Um, I happen to speak for most of them. I, I can't please them all, but I tried try my best. Um, they had a lot of other good ideas in here, like with the setbacks on the front, the sides. Uh, building height was addressed. They are working hard on the commercial end of it. You know, I commend them for everything they've done. Um, but I, I believe that uh, density is going to be a big part of this, and having having this. Uh, this document now I think Chris is right I don't believe there's enough time for a new project to come in to uh, beat the zoning changes uh, I think we can tack this down in the next probably 30 days maybe 60 tops by August it'll be done in 30 yeah 30 I, I days <laughs> even better yeah but I've waited a long time for this report it's here I, I just gotta I commend them for every for the efforts that they had they had a lot of great ideas but I still think uh, I think the density is is the my biggest concern and Wilton's biggest concern so hopefully uh, we can drop that down to where where we believe it belongs I think between the last, you know, the public hearing and, and tonight, that I got to commend the um, zoning revision committee for meeting uh, a couple of times and, and getting as much work done as they could on this. And there's a lot of good um, recommended changes in this. Um, and uh, it's basically, this is would if you put a moratorium on, this is what they would the end result would have been. So I mean. I, I, I agree with both John and John that you know this is a good document that we can work with, and we, can, we still have the option on the density changes through through the uh, uh, an amendment in the future if necessary. But I think um, the, the the need for the moratorium is is not there now. That now that the committee did this hard work, and uh, I think we can address it within 30 days, or as John said, within 60 days at most. 30 days. So 30 days. Oh, well, you need to be careful. You won't be able to adopt the amendments within 30 days. There's not a legal. No, there's not a way to do that. Hearing, so. Right, and referral to the county planning board. We'll get in motion. But you could yeah. absolutely, and you could have the amendments finalized within 30, and you could have them adopted at the uh, at the August meeting if it turns out that. Way. Which happens to be on the very first day of August. So, so Mark, the, the the amendments to this document, you mean? So you're looking at potential zoning amendments. I think that document that we're talking about is a draft of the potential zoning amendments. Mm -hmm. There's a process that can't be completed within 30 days, but the amendments could be completed within 30 days, but not formally adopted. The remaining procedural steps would include referral to the county planning board and scheduling a public hearing. I don't know, as I sit here, when the July town board meeting is, because I'm guessing it's not on the 4th. Um, I don't know That's if coming know. up later. It's going to be on the 3rd. Maybe it is. Okay. So it's on the 3rd. Um, the August meeting, which you could conceivably take action at if the ball keeps rolling along, is actually on the very first day of August. So I'm hoping that we can keep it rolling yeah. real fast. So, so for tonight, though, as far, we would just, we're looking to withdraw local law number one, whatever it was, on the moratorium. Uh, are you asking me or telling me? I no, I mean, that's, that, that would be, the, I, I would assume that's what I'm looking for. <coughs> okay, yeah. that's fine. Excuse me, Art, is the document you guys are looking at, is that online or available? It wasn't. It wasn't. Yeah, it's just planning for the thing. Which way? Which way? Ryan's got it. Yeah, it'll be online. Just to add to the comments, Mark uh, Shack and Ray. The document you have in front of you, there's three sections. There's chapter 109, chapter 129, and then specifically the Hamlet Code Division. Within each document, document there are red lines of every change that has occurred. So these are 95% complete with the update and revisions. It, these revisions need town council review and the board review for any questions, comments. So uh, within the next few weeks, these will be completed if everyone does their review and submits comments. Um, so then at the next, and then they'll be placed online once we get town council review and they'll be placed online, I'm hoping within a couple weeks. So, and there are red line changes, so they're fairly, there's a lot of paper here, but we're fairly efficient and you can review them just looking at the red lines. Okay. 
and I can use all the help if anyone wants to help me review them. So <laughs> I, I know. Uh, so the, the 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 section on the more the section on the moratorium is number nine. Yes, I believe I don't have to assume number nine. Yes. Look at the schedule. Uh, it's the schedule G, which is the Hamlet zone. Uh, there's red lines to the bottom of that, mm -hmm. talking about special permitting for uses within the mixed use buildings. So, if you guys have any questions or comments, uh, feel free. I can talk about this as much as you want or as little as you want. So, obviously, there's a lot to look at here, but I think for the action tonight would be to um, with withdraw the local law uh, for a moratorium. I make a motion we withdraw the mor moratorium for the Hamlet section on Route 9. I'll second that. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion or questions? Okay, uh, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed, so move. Again, I just want to thank the, uh, the Zoning Revision Committee. Uh, they put a lot of effort into this to uh, get this to the point where we are today to uh, take that uh, uh, moratorium off the table. with potential yeah. amend amendments maybe. Approved with amendments, the way I read. I've already read most of the part, so um, I only have one amendment, and I just want to make sure the rest of it's in line with. So. Okay, uh, so actually that takes us into number nine. Brian, are you only talking more about that? The, we're given drafts of- uh, Unless the board wants to talk in more detail about the revision changes. Uh, yeah, I will add to, yes, the Zoning Revision Committee has been working hard on this. We've been working hard to get these revisions updated and to you guys, you know, last minute today, but it is in your hands and uh, definitely at the July 3rd meeting, they will be 100% complete, sent to the county, planning board for referral, and you can schedule a public hearing August 1st. And if you so choose, vote them in, however, they are at that point. So in July, we will get, we will have a final in July. There, this document that you have in your hands right now is for your review right, and town Ramsdale. council review. Thank you. So you can make comments on what you want. Well, you said there's more coming, and the final one will be July. Maybe I, I they will be 100 percent complete with town council review in the July at the July okay. by the July 3rd meeting. And that's when we can make our revisions. No, you can you make revisions between now and July 3rd. Well, they won't mean anything until July. Pardon? They won't mean anything until July. You mean as far as enacting them? They they will be. You can't, you can't legally enact them the final version until the August 1st meeting. You won't be able to. Could you? If, best case scenario if I'm understanding if I'm following along what your goal is the best case scenario would be at the July meeting have an updated revised whatever we want to call it package of proposed amendments and schedule a public hearing for the August 1st town board meeting refer that package of the proposed amendments to the county planning board for its review at its July meeting which would be on the whatever the third Thursday of July is and then on August 1st at our town board meeting have the public hearing and if you're comfortable adopting the amendments that night you could do it that it should be all wrapped up by August gotcha. well, we would have to vote on any changes absolutely yeah August this August. August right August no we, no, no that would be no. July yeah. If you wouldn't make an amendment, you wouldn't have to be voting on them at July, but you have to, you could say, it depend, you don't need that level of formality at the July meeting. At the July meeting, you have to decide if you want to stay on this time schedule. At the July meeting, you have to decide what is the final package of proposed amendments for referral to the county planning board and to schedule a public hearing for Thursday night, August 1st. You could still make minor amendments along the way, and you can also make amendments on the night of the public hearing and the night of adoption. That's one of the purposes of a public 
public hearing. At the July meeting, though, we can discuss absolutely uh, everything that can, we want to talk about. Can and should. Yeah. Can and should. Right. Okay. Yeah. Can and should. Yes. I just want to make sure. I'm hoping within the next two weeks you provide all comments, and we will also provide them to the zoning revision committee, and town council will review within the next two weeks. No, we, we're not in line. With, I'm not in line with. I mean, I'm in line with most of the committee. There's there's just one detail that I'm not in line. With. Right. And that's what you uh, will we'll add uh, to the July. Uh, like somebody had said, I wasn't allowed uh, to speak at the. You were. Uh, to an extent. Wow. All right. So, all right. So we got we got a plan here. Oh. I believe this all went before the county prior. Yeah. Not the zoning revisions. Not the revision. Mm -hmm. But um, the moratorium. The moratorium. Did they forward an opinion? Is that everything? Yeah, it's all it's it says approved and then there's a long you're welcome to it, but it's a two page letter that is just a generic discussion of moratoria is largely a generic discussion of moratoria in the state of New York. I'm not sure why they threw that in, but that's what they threw in. They don't. They don't recommend on a local uh, lo local laws. They leave that up to the local jurisdiction. They just uh, so. Okay. Next is committee reports. John, you first. Danny. All right, obviously, uh, I've been trying to keep everybody updated. I speak a lot of words every month, but uh, this month, if you want to peruse the pictures, I have given you some visual aids. Uh, they are guy-friendly, and not only written instructions, they're, I know I like instructions with pictures. Um, basically, that's the uh, Gavin Park project, most of it. Uh, the bottom right-hand picture is some of the offices that we are relocating from, again, they're, in, they're still under construction. The bottom right picture is the offices that we are relocating from the court building. They're gonna be moved into the basement. Um, the dog catcher, the historian's uh, record storage are gonna be down there. Um, the maintenance department, uh, Scott Harrington and his group, they're gonna have an office downstairs. Um, they have made escape towers and made it compliant um, with all fire codes. Uh, the new town historian's office is complete, and that is in the senior citizens uh, building. Uh, her office is complete. I think she's in it now. Yes, <laughs> and she loves it. So, so, so we are moving ahead. Um, the Gavin Park project, as you can see, is it's very, very big project. We have a very ambitious deadline. Uh, we are trying to get it open before summer camp. We are probably maybe a week or so behind schedule because of the rain. Um, but as you can see, the the old pavilion, the top two right, uh, top two left pictures. The old pavilion that was existing was re removed and moved to another location. It's pretty much ready for landscaping. Uh, the park department's going to be doing the landscaping around it, and it should be opening, I'm not sure when, but it should be soon. It's just a matter of some dirt and backfill to it. So that pavilion is pretty much ready to go. And then uh, the current pavilion is all the steels erected as and the top right three pictures is where we're kind of at now. Uh, the steel is up and we have a gravel foundation. Um, we did do add-ons. We added uh, water and electric out there. So if we're having an 80, 120 foot structure, we should put lights in it so we can use it at night. And it's gonna have water uh, capabilities uh, there. Um, restrooms, we are discussing for down the line. Uh, but again, it's a very ambitious progress uh, project. Um, what you see there is has been all done except for some minor contract or outside contract work that has been done by all of our town employees. Uh, what a great undertaking and what skill set our town employees have to be able to re erect a structure like that. Um, I had gotten some figures. If we had contracted that structure and had it done by a contractor, Sorry, Bill, we didn't contract you. Um, it would have cost us right around $800,000. Um, with our guys doing the work and construction and with materials, um, I've been informed it's gonna be right around 250 or under. So I mean, that's like a $550,000 savings. So I, uh, the guys asked me, I, I like to name them and thank them personally, but they asked me not to do that this week. So maybe next month. Um, core project 
is the next project. Uh, no pictures there for the court building. The contract was awarded to Roselle Industries, I believe it is. Roselle Industries, I believe the contract is available. People need to see it. Um, they were scheduled to initially start June 10th, which would have been next week. Uh, the court has a scheduled uh, jury trial. Um, so we are delaying the actual hands-on stuff, uh, possibly by a week or so. Uh, but so by next meeting, hopefully I will have some progress updates as far as the court building. Um, How's your sprinkler system coming? Um, that is still in discussion, and uh, we're trying to work with a, a price on that. It's the last time I knew. Um, so there are, you know, obviously uh, discussions on the sprinkler system. Automatically, it's always a good thing. Um, we're just trying to look, get some numbers as far as that. Um, we sent any uh, proposals out, did any bids? Not yet, because that's the interior work is a little later down the line, so right. we do have some time on that. Okay. Um, so the core building should be starting, um, hopefully within the next week or two. Uh, the third project that is on my uh, plate is the highway super uh, highway department salt screens. I guess it's technically called. Um, Ryan, could you elaborate? I didn't really get to make many notes on that. So uh, the design work for that is relocating the existing sand salt screens that are out there to uh, a better location, you know, just adjacent to where they are now. Uh, that will require demolition of the existing uh, screens and installation of new concrete walls uh, and uh, larger screens so the actual the trucks can instead of trying to back into these salt screens they'll be able to drive through load them more efficiently be more efficient process for the highway during the winter operations but uh, the designs are probably about 90 percent complete we're going to get the drawings early next week and uh, the town will be able to review those drawings work with highway see what portion of work they'll take on and those will be going out to bid shortly and that work will be getting done before the snow flies Thank that's you. the key that's the that's key. the big key <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yeah, great job. Anyone else in committee reports? There's, there's still uh, time to register for summer camp. If anybody's still interested in summer camp, a few spots left. Kids. Uh, and today being the uh, 75th anniversary of D-Day, I just wanted to say thanks to all our veterans and those who gave the ultimate sacrifice for the freedoms that we have here today. You know, God bless them all. God bless our troops. God bless our president. And uh, God bless the United States um, and all of you. So that's all. Good point. Anything? Yeah, as we all know, Judge Worth uh, retired when he appointed Matt uh, Casio. I went to his first day to court. I've been to other ones. And I wish you all would go and see him. He's a true, true uh, professional. He knows his business, the law. How he dresses everybody, Mr. Mrs. He explains everything if they can plead bargain. And I, and I just want you to know we made the right decision with him. And if you get a chance, I wish you'd go to court and watch him action. And don't just go out and get a speeding ticket to get there. You can go <laughs> without a ticket. But we made the right choice with that guy. But go for yourself and see him in action. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I just have a couple announcement of events. Uh, first of all, coming up is on Saturday is the uh, Elks Flag Day Parade. Um, if any of you are going to join join me that day, um, it's you got to meet at North Broadway at First and Second What's Street. This Saturday. This Saturday. This Saturday. This Saturday at it's eleven eleven o'clock. Already this way. Yeah. You still got that wagon with the horse? <laughs> No, uh, we're walking this year. That was bicentennial. <laughs> well, I thought we could get it back. <laughs> I can bring the ambulance. I was going to say, he's got it. So, I hope some of you can join, join me that day. Uh, also, on the 9th, the Wilton Preservation Board is going to be uh, uh, ha having an event in appreciation of the, those folks that have uh, put their houses out there to, uh, uh, and they're going to be presenting plaques uh, uh, to those people with historic homes that have opened them up to, to, to people. That's from 1 to 3 on, uh, on, the, on the 9th. And that'll be at the meeting hall, the Wilton Heritage Meeting Hall. And then coming up on Father's Day is the annual Wilton Heritage Society Strawberry Social. And that's uh, 1 to 4 um, on, uh, on, the, on the 16th. So 
They're all good events. Yeah, that's a good one. Everybody's welcome. Hopefully you can attend. And the uh, last item tonight is uh, controls report, yes. uh, Maria. Yes. So we have six budget transfers that need board approval and or ratification. Mm -hmm. The first four are um, in relation to, actually they all are in relation to accounts that need money budgetarily. Um, and if the money is coming from accounts that have a surplus at this point in time. Um, the last two, numbers five and six, the board has already approved, but we just need ratification tonight on those. Any questions for Maria on those? One through four, one through six. One through um, six. So one right. through four just require approval, and five and six require ratification. So do we need two separate? Or just we can, can we just do them in one? I think you can. Yes. Once mm -hmm. I'll put forth a motion to approve the budget transfers. One through six. One through six. I'll second it. A motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Okay. And under personnel, the first two items are related. Last month, the board had approved the hire of Robert Bissell for auto mechanic at step one. Um, he has since declined the position, so the board just needs to approve the declination of this individual for the auto mechanic at step one. And Yes. <laughs> Looks like you have a question. I think he had information from Kurt. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Um, I think that this particular individual had a um, concern about vacation time or some leave accruals. Um, that was what kind of made him change his mind. Uh, so yes. Yeah. It's official. He changed It's official. He officially yeah. changed his mind. I'm making Someone not wanting a job. <laughs> and then uh, letter Disapprove, B. Disapprove, I guess. I don't know. Uh, I'm sorry. Did we get the first and second? I don't know if you need a first and second right now, yeah. but. One second. Do we actually have to motion to the, someone to decline? Oh, no. there we go. Yeah. For information only? Yeah. Okay. And then um, item B is that we are asking the board to approve the hire of Gregory Kruger as auto mechanic step one at the rate of 23.66 an hour. Is he going to last a month? I'm sorry. Does he know about Is he going to last a whole month? I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> make a motion I, I hope I don't have to see his name next month. <laughs> make a motion to approve the hiring of Gregory Kruger. I'll second. Uh, motion. Is there a second? Yes. Oh, okay. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So move. Um, letter C involves the request to hire a full-time building maintenance mechanic. It's a full-time position that's been approved by the county. Um, the hourly rate is going to be determined based on the experience that the candidate brings forward. Um, the position replaces the board's previously approved seasonal hire. Last month, we approved the hire of a seasonal position, so this will take the place of that. This is from Mark. This is from Mark. Uh, you want us to approve something we don't know how much we're going to be approving? Uh, it's Scott's department. It's a full mm. staff. No, it's, it's <laughs> one of the staff that's what we should go in and pay. No, he, he's requesting at the uh, the step one rate. That's all. Right. Base. Uh, yes, seventeen. Seventeen. Oh, I don't remember. It's. I believe it's forty-four. But yes, it'd be step one on our salary schedule for that position. Yes. Step. One. And then the last item well, we, is... We got to approve oh, that. Right, I'll make a motion to approve Mark's hire in the building department. I'll second it. Motion and second. Any other questions or discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I'll move. And the last item is that the assessor's office is requesting to attend a seminar in July. Tina Weber is requesting to attend from July 15th through the 19th. And Nicole Monroe is requesting to attend from July 15th through July 18th and this trip requires overnight travel therefore the board needs to approve make a motion send them both second, second it okay. 
motion and a second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Is there any other business any of you want to bring up? I make a motion we adjourn. We a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Good night, everyone. So, what Make sure you got the dates when you went out. He's already